usually tall the eye. Yeah. Maryland, a style. No, I'm the same person, but it's a different suit. <laughs> Welcome to Marilyn Monroe-thon, where I look at the starring roles of the actress Norma Jean Baker, aka Marilyn Monroe. Last time, we were looking at the movie Ladies of the Chorus. After that role, she was re-signed by Fox and put into a collection of ensemble piece roles. Apparently Mr. King of Hollywood, Daryl Zanuck, didn't know what he had. Her next lead role would come in a movie called Don't Bother to Knock, a film noir that really does expand the sort of roles Monroe had done previously. Now I'm just going to mention that this movie does touch on a couple of sensitive subjects, such as violence, suicide and murder. And this might not be for everyone. So the movie begins in an upscale hotel with lounge singer and future Mrs. Robinson, Lynn, who bookends the story. First by breaking up with our lead man, Jed, probably because he's rude to the camera girl, and is that a sombrero ashtray? And this is where we're introduced to Monroe's character, Nell. And they actually managed to do something amazing. They managed to make her look plain like a fish out of water just surrounded by all this glamour. Marilyn Monroe. And Monroe once again is showing, even early on in her career, that she can act. Her body language and the slow, purposeful way she speaks communicates that there is something just not right about her character. The first five to ten minutes when she's interacting with the parents and the child that she's going to be looking after, I just had this tiny churning sensation in my stomach and just waiting for it all to go south and the first scene she has with that kid I was on absolute tender hooks but I would say that a scene right at the beginning was one of the most poignant pieces of acting in Marilyn Monroe's career So our man Jed sees Nell across the hotel courtyard, wearing the mother's sleeping clothes, and contacts her via a system that seems pretty ripe for exploitation. Her uncle Eddie comes to the room and reprimands her about the night clothes, jewellery and perfume, and reveals that Nell had a boyfriend who was shot down during the war, someone that she's still grieving over, and plants the idea that she could find someone new. And this begins, oh. I see. This is where we find out that Nell is not a healthy woman. And this movie does not shy away from that fact. So Jed comes over, makes himself comfy, and they start chatting. And when he mentions he's a pilot and that he flew during the war, there is an absolutely tragic scene as Nell reworks in her mind that Jed is her lost love. Come back to her. But like most romantic moments, it has to be ruined by a kid. And this is where her scenes with Bunny begin to take on a genuinely terrifying turn. The most horrifying part of any interaction she has with this child actor is the fact that when asked, Monroe said that an inspiration for her character was her own mother. I can't help during these scenes but to see a little Norma Jean being reprimanded by her mother, being told to be quiet and stop bothering her. It's actually rather horrible. And when Eddie comes back to the room and we, the audience, get more information on how Nell had been in institutes, how they thought she'd been cured, and how he's now having worries about her stability. There's a connection to Monroe's own life that gives her performance a genuine and organic nature. It is compelling to watch, but it is horrible when you think about her personal life. From here, things escape. Oh God! 
Oh God. Then during the climax of the movie, I was wholly on the absolute edge as a collection of characters make their way to the room to hopefully get there before Nell does something to Bunny. And even after all of that, when she manages to slip by everyone and makes her way to the lobby, I still found myself wanting her to make a run for it, just, just bolt for the door. But she doesn't do that. She is, thank God, stopped by Lynn and with one sad little smile, Nell is taken away to somewhere that will hopefully give her the help that she needs. This one was not an easy watch. It definitely hits home when you know more about Marilyn Monroe's history, her relationship with her mother and her own issues with her mental health. I think that this movie is woefully underappreciated in Monroe's career. It really does show off her acting chops, her versatility and I would say that Anybody who says that Marilyn Monroe cannot act has to watch this movie. Like Ladies of the Chorus, it's quite short, it's only an hour and 13 minutes, so it's not a huge amount of time, and I cannot recommend it enough. It's a really good watch. <sighs> right, so, next up will be Niagara. I'm sure that'll be a lot more fun. Right.